You know, when, when Jesus died and he went, to ha- when he went to heaven, he came back. If you guys remember this, he came back and, and appeared to the disciples and, and to many people. And he wanted to, sh- to prove that he was a living God, that he was the resurrection of the dead, right? But he came back for 40 days and he had a message that he preached consistently for those 40 days. No other message he taught on the kingdom of God. It says in Acts 1-3, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And that's what I've come to talk to you about today. It's about the kingdom of God. It seems to be what also is on our pastor Dean's heart because he put it up on the TV. Uh, His message to you is to pursue the kingdom. And that's what I've come to talk to you about. And God has given me some words about Jamaica that I want to share. You know, about the kingdom of God, I want to go to 1 Peter. Uh, sorry, 2 Peter, if you guys want to go there. It says in, uh, in chapter 1, verse 10, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Did you know that you have to be supplied with an entrance into the kingdom of God? Many of us might think, I'm a Christian, I'm in the kingdom of God. Not so. Peter, at the beginning of this, he's addressing to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's talking to them that I, he goes, that if you pursue these things, you won't stumble and find an entrance and be given an entrance to the kingdom of God. Don't let us not deceive ourselves. This entrance into the kingdom of God is a precious thing. And God, the father is the one that has to supply you with an entrance into the kingdom of God. So what are those things that we must pursue? Uh, The scripture that he wrote is, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So our job is to pursue the kingdom and his righteousness. And it's, it's no easy task. We have to go through a long wilderness of getting things burned out of us so that we might become purified to obtain that entrance to the kingdom of God. Let me read this. I'm backing up a little bit in First Peter, in Second Peter, verse 8. But also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you, if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten what he has been cleansed from his sins. We have to take an inventory of our hearts to find out, are there are things in my heart that are keeping me from the kingdom of God. You're responsible. This is what the Lord told me a little while ago back in the States. He said, you are responsible for the condition of your heart. Now, God is working on it, but he makes you responsible to till the soil of your heart. Remove those boulders. Walk in holiness. Pursue his righteousness. He tells me to walk in forgiveness. I got to pursue for, I got to pursue forgiveness. His says to be, to be generous, to have a generous, kind heart. I have to be generous and have a kind heart. You are responsible for your heart. Because, I'm going to go somewhere real, real quick. I'm going to jump over to Hebrews chapter 6. This is very important. Okay. 6 3. Now I'm going to read a little, I'm going to back up a little bit. Listen to this. In Hebrews chapter 6, 
Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. That's what I'm talking about right here. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of the faith towards God, of the doctrines of baptisms, of laying on hands, of resurrection from the dead, and of eternal judgment. Let us move on from those things. Those are some big things. Speaking about the resurrection of the dead, laying on hands, healing the sick, repenting from dead works. Those are big things that us Christians work on, right? But he says, let's move on. To what? Perfection. He's speaking about the secrets of the kingdom of God. The thing that Jesus came back and preached for 40 days. He didn't come back preaching the kingdom to the unsaved. He came back teaching his disciples, hey, this is a new thing. This kingdom of God thing has changed, people. Upon my death and my sacrifice and my death and going to the Father has opened up something new for the kingdom that has not been known. That may have been, th the forefathers may have seen it, but they never got to experience it. The kingdom is now available to you. He was excited about it. And we go day by day talking about the elementary principles about Christ, and that's not bad. But what about, what if we go on talking about the things of the kingdom? And he says in verse 3, and this we will do if God permits. Whoa. Whoa. You mean that God is the one that has to supply me an entrance to the kingdom? And God is the one that can even allow me to understand the kingdom? Yeah. Yeah. There are many that don't even understand the kingdom. They're working on the elementary principles. Okay. But God has got a message for you today. Come into the clear understanding of the principles of the kingdom of God where there is power. Jumping forward to the end of Revelation. I'm, I'm trying to give you today a secret that will qualify you for God's kingdom. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life. Where is the tree of life? It's in the kingdom. So that you might have, that you may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to those things in the church, in the, to the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. So if he's the morning star, also spoken about in chapter 2 of Revelation, it says, if you overcome to the church of Thyatira, if you overcome, I will give you the morning star. Jesus says he's the morning star. I'm going to give you a secret if you have ears to hear today. The morning star is Jesus. God the Father is trying to transform you into the image of what? His son, Jesus. He says, if you overcome, I will give you the morning star. It's about surrender. Allowing the Father to transform you into the image of Christ and come forth is the morning star. So he, God told me some things about Jamaica. He told me that one, he's coming to do a marvelous work here. He is coming, and I've said in this church before, to make Jamaica a city of, on the hill, 
a light to the other nations. He is. He's coming because of the prayers of the saints over the year, last few years have been crying out for God. And he says that he's heard your prayers and he's giving answer. Praise God. Unlike other nations, and I, I love Pastor's heart where he says, this place is where God's coming. And it's like, you, you know that he's coming here. Not, not I'll call everyone in the world. He's come because of you and your prayers. So he showed me a vision. He showed me a vision of a, a statue of a woman made out of bronze. And in the statue, the woman was, face, was like this. And there was a hand shoving, shoving in her face and turning her head and keeping her from seeing. The church has been hold, held down because we haven't been able to see the kingdom. We haven't been able to see it. We're, we've been the hand, the hand is, represents the authorities in Jamaica. The authority in the church has, has kept you from seeing the kingdom. The church and the government is oppressing you and keeping you down. And God said, I'm coming to change that. My church will see. He's going to give you, and this is what God said. He's going to permit you to see his kingdom. But not everyone, unfortunately, he went on to say. Do you know when the scriptures in Amos talks about those that are sitting on the edge of the couch and on the corner of the bed? Do you know what that means? Do you know what it means? What does it mean? There. <coughs> That's right. He says it's those that are fully engaged with God. When you're listening to someone very important and you're sitting on the edge of the couch, you're like you're listening versus laid back. You've got your legs crossed and laid back like you could, you're, not, you're just a casual conversation. He says those that are carefully listening on the ed corners of their bed at night when you're praying, listening to him, and those that are on the edge of the couch going, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. He's going to share the king. He's going to permit you guys to see the kingdom if you want it. If you want it. But seeing the kingdom is marvelous. It's why we're here. We're here to be called sons, not children of God. God showed me as I was in this church a vision. And it fits in, it's been in, in completely in line. Everything I'm hearing has been in completely in line with Pastor Dean's. He's praying for the city of, of, of uh, Montego Bay. God showed me a vision of your, the church's way has been filled with thistles and thorns and darkness. There was darkness all around and thistles and thorns. You couldn't, you couldn't pass. It was so thick. Then he opened the way. And there was a narrow path that was before me. I saw it. And flanked on either side of this path were crops for your food, for your nourishment. He's going to make a way. But the path is narrow. What do we know about the path to the kingdom of God? It's narrow. And few find it. So don't deceive yourselves into thinking I'm securely in the kingdom of God no matter what. Perhaps some of you are, and I hope that you are. But take an inventory and ask yourself, how pure is my heart? Lord, show me my heart. Lord, create in me a clean heart, as David said. That's what you would need to do. That's what he wants you to do, because he wants to reveal his kingdom to you, if he permits. But he's saying, trust me, he's making it available to you, not to the world. <coughs> There's a price to understanding God's kingdom and then not walking by it. It's not love to give you the full understanding of his kingdom if you're not even close to walking in holiness and righteousness. It's not, that's not him, because he didn't have to hold you accountable. Do you want that? 
That's why he adds to that scripture, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added on to you. So you can't carry on living in your sin and say, well, I want to have the kingdom. He wants you to work those things out first. He's a loving God, and he is able by his, he has given you a promise. The Father gave you, each of you, a promise. He says, I promise to complete the work that I've begun in you. I promise, and he is not a liar. The only one that can stop him is you. You can help God clean your heart by his grace. Accept it. When he asks you to forgive your neighbor, forgive your neighbor. It may be difficult, but that's your choice. When he asks you to stop lying, stop lying. When he asks you to walk in righteousness, walk in righteousness. And this is what he's saying. This is what he went on to say. I'm going to back up a little bit if I have time. That last, a year and a half ago, God came to Jamaica and he, let me back, let me just start with what it says in Amos because this is, this is good stuff. In Amos chapter 3, now the, the Lord gave me that verse before I came here when I was asking about Jamaica on this trip. He said, Amos chapter 3. And there's a lot in that chapter, but I'm going to read one part of it. It says, surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servant, the prophets. A lion has roared. Who will, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? My wife and I both had visions Perhaps it was a dream on her part and a vision on my part of seeing a lion before he gave me that scripture. There was a lion. I saw a lion walking across the earth. And she saw a lion in her dream. There's a lion roaring in Jamaica. And he doesn't do anything until he sa tells the secrets to his prophets and they proclaim it. They cannot help but prophesy. I'm here today to prophesy to you. It affects not only this room. When a prophecy goes forth, it, it, it affects the whole land, just like he's praying. This, this is God's land. He's roaring over Jamaica. Here's, here's what he has done, and he revealed this to me before he did it. He overthrew the principality of, of the, the spirit of religion over Jamaica. He did that. Hallelujah is right. He did that. There, there's powers in the heavenlies and there's powers on earth. Last year, God overthrew the powers of the altars on the earth and he broke off the altar, off the horns off the altar and they fell to the ground. He did that for you in Jamaica because of your prayers. Hallelujah. He has done many things. Now we may not see with our eyes we might perceive that God is doing something, but with our eyes, I was asking God about this. The person I was staying with said, a friend of ours was saying, yeah, we, there was a period there last year where it seemed like the, violent, the violence slowed down. I don't know if you guys experienced that last year, did you? That was after we prayed over the power of the altars. And now it's picked up again, I understand. And I asked God about that. He said, yeah, I've left some of the enemies in the, in the land for you. He's done his work. He's answered your prayer, but he's left some enemies in the land. Do you understand that? They did that in the Old Testament, right? But that was his answer. I said, oh. And he goes, my sons that I'm raising up will, will take care of this. My sons will do it. That's the people in this room. That's the people in this country that God is raising up to see the kingdom and to walk in the power of God's kingdom to take care of this, la this, lasting, this last bit of darkness. And Jamaica would become a place of light. In my vision, he showed me that there was darkness still. There was great darkness. Around the thorns and the thistles, there was a great darkness around it. 
And the church could not move. It was impassable for the church to move forward. But then he said, now look. And there was a, a narrow path flanked by food, crops on either side. But it was still dark, very dark. Because he's left this enemy for the sons to fight. He said, fight, fight, fight. He was right on when he was saying these things. Do you see what he, you see the message that God is delivering to you? Yes, you have to fight with righteousness. Yes, proclaim, but become righteous. Walk in holiness, become a son. And if you come, become a son. You walk with his authority. You, you gain your inheritance. The children don't get to receive their inheritance. Children are loved by God, and they're working some things out. But those that have entered his kingdom and tasted of the heavenly gift, in Hebrews chapter 6, and the, they have tasted of the powers to come, reserved as your inheritance in the kingdom of God with Jesus, that's sufficient to scare off all these devils that are running around. So he shared with me this. I was asking him, I go, how does this work? And he said, the principalities have been removed. Do you know that the enemy has a governmental structure? But so does God. God is archangels, and he has lower angels. He has a structure. And that's to bring order, because God is a God of order. But the enemy also has structure. What? Ranks. ranks. He has ranks. So this is what's happened in Jamaica. He took out the top, one, top rank, the this, this principality of religion. He removed it. He knocked off a lot of the middle ones by knocking out the powers of the altars. And this is what he shared with me. He said, what's left are just demons. They were quiet for a while because they just saw their, 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 ex their structure of authority be wiped out. And now they're stepping out a little bit with random acts of violence because they're not coordinated. They're just demons stepping out with random acts of, of violence because there's no structure. That's the enemy that he's left for you to fight. Are you up to the challenge to, be, to fight that? Because these aren't principalities you're fighting. No, we don't fight principalities. God does. And those higher powers, are, we have to be careful of those, but these are just demons running around. You have authority over them. As you walk in righteousness, you have authority. You'll bring the light. The vision I had was dark because you don't know that your way is being opened up for you. They don't know, they don't know they're doing wrong. But the way has been made open to you to walk in righteousness and, to, and proclaim Jamaica for God's kingdom. He's coming. He left the enemy in the land for you to become strong, to learn how to fight. Learn how to fight. And that's what my brother is encouraging you to do. Learn how to fight. You can't fight from a position of unholiness. The enemy will laugh at you. But there's some in this room that know what I'm saying, that are walking in righteousness, could be quiet, could be unassuming, very small in, in stature perhaps, but they're powerful and mighty in the spirit because they're walking in holiness. And they're the powerful ones in the kingdom. It's those ones that just walk in righteousness. So I only had a few minutes up here, people. I want to end it right there, but know that, honestly, God is speaking over Jamaica. He loves you guys. He loves you so much. He's here today. He loves you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Well, you know, Jesus but one time was teaching his disciples how to pray. They, they asked him to teach them how to pray. And what he said, pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven, in Montego Bay, as it is in heaven. And so we thank our brother Gar Gary for sharing with us um, the kingdom of God. Now, we know that's, that's what we preach here, the kingdom of God, because um, that's the way. And so the kingdom is exciting, but we need to find it. So the scripture encourages us, seek, seek, seek. You know, it's an active word. We have to keep on seeking. It's not like you look one time and didn't find, and so you gave up or got frustrated. Seek, the word actually means to seek and keep on seeking. And so as we continue to seek the kingdom, I believe that your best days and your blessed days are ahead of you. Not just as an individual, as a church, as the city, as the nation. We are excited about the kingdom. Thanks again for sharing with us. So at this time, I'm going to ask you to put your hands together and let us welcome our, our sister Anne Davis as she come and introduce our group and share with us this morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day that the Lord made. And we will say it, and we will say it loud and clear so the enemy can hear. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Can we say that? We will be glad and rejoice in it. We just gave the devil a black eye. That's what we did. Sarah Bennett, um, she's going to minister in song for us. And we know it's going to be a blessing. Oh, yep, sure. Mm -hmm. Praise God. We're going to continue to bless the Lord and worship him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. It's running after me 
with my life laid down. I, I surrender now. I give you everything. Oh, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. All my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. I'm going to sing, because all my life you have all of my life you've been faithful hallelujah oh lord you've been so so good with every breath every breath i'm able i'm gonna sing of the goodness of god yes i am yes of the goodness of to God I tell you hallelujah I get excited glory to God every time I think about the fact that he's pursuing me glory to God little old me hallelujah he's running after me with his goodness hallelujah his grace and his mercy hallelujah he's running after you children of God with his goodness let him catch up to you hallelujah to shower you glory to God thank you so much praise the Lord God be the glory for the great things he has done and is doing. Last year, remember we talked about go? Don't think about just go. We say go, just go. But this year, the Holy Spirit says, say what Jesus said. You say what Jesus said, S-A-I-D. Now, if you think about the world now, there's a lot going on. I don't know about Jamaica, but where we're from, it's a lot of mass shooting, killing, stabbing, sex trafficking, and transgender. So we hear it all out there. But again, we have to say what Jesus said. Now, when the news come on, when it comes on through the air, the world that is. They want to repeat what is said or what is done. That doesn't help the situation. That elevates it. Because you're agreeing with the enemy about what's going on and what he's doing. If you go back to the book of Genesis, though, we must remember we have a creator that created heaven and earth. The earth is the Lord. He owns, create everything. And Genesis 1, 1, he says, he created the heaven and the earth. So the enemy don't own the world. But I think we forget that when we see all the mass killing, the mass this, the mass that. It takes our mind and focus off who the creator is. One who can control and protect and sustain. If you go back into the book of Genesis, it's always what Jesus said. He said, let there be light. And there was light. And so be it. You know, and let there be darkness. And he said it all throughout the book of Genesis. What he said, and whatever he said, it came to pass. But we are not saying it, we're repeating it. And repeating it is not helping the situation. It's elevating the situation. It's making the situation still worse. So anyway, I came with the thought, the first thought is that we must remember our creator. You know, because what's going on is trying to, take, trying to replace the creator. But that didn't create nothing. Our God created everything. So it's time to say what God said. 
said in the book of Genesis, he says, the be- in the beginning, the very beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And in spite of what's going on in the earth, we have to say what Jesus said. That's the first thing when you hear the mass killing, who still is in control. And then the second thing is that it starts with the mind. And if you can get over that part, then you at home base. And the, and the word of God says, it says that we have to cast down vain imagination. Well, all the vain, imagina- all the vain imaginations are what's evil, what's bad, but we're not casting them down. We're receiving them by running our mouth and repeating it. Oh, yeah, did you hear what happened last night? Yeah, it was 23, got shot in school. Yeah, they went to the church and somebody got shot. But we're not doing a thing about it, but talking about it, which is elevating it and keeping it going. So we have to remember all what God said. He said, cast those vain imaginations down. There's a lot of fear and worry throughout the land, a lot, because we're not doing the right thing. We're, we are... Um, concentrating on all the bad and the evil, but we're not doing what God said. So number one, when it comes, but we have a creator that created heaven and earth. Number two, he told us not to let it ponder. If it ponder, you got it. Cast down the vain imagination. And I agree with uh, Pastor Dean. He, he said what Jesus said this morning. Now let's be, you are not going to make this no uh, a sin city. This is going to be a kingdom city. So he took authority, so he said what Jesus said. And it, it went in the atmosphere, and it shall come to pass. Now the angels can work. They got something to work with now. But not to say anything, then the enemy has his legal right to continue to festate and make it bigger. But you put a stop to it this morning. You said, enough's enough. God gave me authority over this thing. He said, every name got to bow to the name of Jesus, no matter what it is, and that's what you did. And, and finally, this short thought is that we got to obey. It's not time for us to be scared, not to open our mouth up. If you have the Holy Ghost, he said, you open your mouth, I'll speak through you. So if he come to you and asks you to minister to someone or to say something, we have to open our mouth up knowing that God said, I'll fill it for you. Just open it up. You know, he, the enemy wants us to be solid, quiet, quit, uh, quiet Christians. It's not time to be quiet, Christians. It's time for us to say what Jesus said and nothing else. And I like giving them a black eye because if people come, if, if people come to me, even my family, I love them dearly, but they come with that negative news, you can still love them, you know, but you let the word go out because that word is quick. <laughs> quick and two-edged sword. Let it go out quick and still love and, hug and love on them, but you can't just sit there and listen to it. Because it's not helping them, and it's not helping you, and it's not helping the kingdom, neither. Not, no, it's not. No, it's not. So we live in a time where evil is all around us. It appear like the devil's winning. It looks like he's winning. But we still have to say, Jesus said. But Jesus said. You're talking to the enemy. Um, I was in an accident 12 years ago. Some of you may not know. And um, I was pinning the car for 45 minutes and wore two fixations on my right leg for three and a half months. And um, they said, well, she might lose her leg. I mean, you know, the world, she, if, it, if, the, if the infection stand her by the long, it may turn to cancer. All these, all these are thoughts, these evil thoughts. But I had to trust God enough to say, but I believe that I serve a God that healeth thee. I believe the word went forth and healed them all. I had to believe that by Jesus Christ, I'm healed. You need not know. I wore a non-stick band on my, it was right on the bone here, where it was, they couldn't draft skin because the cut was right on the bone of my knee. It wasn't until three and a half years later that it was healed. For three and a half years, I had to still praise God, I had to still say his word, and it was right before Thanksgiving 2012. It happened 2015, I took the non-stick bandage off, and it was nothing on it. And I was all excited. I said, well, now I'm going to go back to the university hospital and see what the report is. He said, Miss Davis, your wound has been healed from the inside out. <laughs> Completely healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so you have to say what Jesus said. 
I mean, because they thought I wasn't going to walk. And when this thing occurred, I was about 75. I'm 82 now. And they said, wow, she had to go through so much, you know. But because you had to say what Jesus said. You can't repeat what the, what the devil said or what's going on because you're not helping as a Christian. You are, we are his ambassadors. And he relied on us to be his spokesman. And we have to do just that. And God is still, that, in theory, uh, your song was a blessing. And I can relate to that, how good God is. Because uh, when I was at, I went to four rehabs and three different hospitals to get where I, where I am now. Four different rehabs. One rehab, I was taking therapy seven days a week, even on Sunday. And I, you know, when I was at rehab in Baltimore, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to write the story. Well, uh, you know, after you go coming through college, all those uh, uh, essay, essays, research papers, you know, at that age, you don't want to do all that work, you know? I, I just dismiss the thing. I dismiss it. I say, like I didn't even hear. But how did when that Holy Ghost come back for that second time, third time? You better listen. Not that I'm afraid of God, but I fear his power. I fear my blessing being blocked. But I have, in that 11 years span, I've had three brothers who have passed, three sisters who have passed, and uh, two brother-in-laws who have passed. So I had all these distractions in the way that caused me to stop writing the book. But then when things got clear, all smooth away, Holy Ghost said, now you go back and finish it. So I thank God this uh, May, gone, I did finally finish the book. It called God Did It. It's a true story of how God raised me up and healed me at my age and keeping the word. And it's a true story. You know, on the paperback. I didn't, it wasn't written because I was trying to make money. I wrote it because of obedience of the Holy Spirit. So in chapter 8, um, like I said, that hole, it was a hole right in the middle of this, right of the bone there. And after it was three and a half years that I had to keep standing on the word of God, still trusting the word of God. So when God looked at us, he said, oh, you know, she stood the test. She stood the test. Now I'm going to show her what I can do. I mean, they try. I even had embryo, like in the baby wound, the embryo, all kind of experimentations on this wound. They put embryo down in the hole, everything you can think of. Honey, you think everything that man could think of went down that little hole. But God supernaturally healed it from the inside out. Yes, he did. So I implore you this morning, my word for you is that let's say what Jesus said. Not with what we see with the eyes, what we feel, but what he said. And that's the word of God. Say what he said. So could you turn to someone and say, say what Jesus said. Say what Jesus said. I want you to mean it. Look at him, another person. Say what Jesus said. Say what Jesus said. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's, when we do that, that'll build the kingdom. And like I say, I, like I like giving the devil a black eye. You know, black eye is not doing what the devil say or the evil, but the opposite. He said overcome evil with good children. And that's one I had to grow on. You know, you don't want to give a person a gift that's been mean to you, but you got to do what the words say to be blessed, you know. So that's my word today. Say what Jesus said, and that is building his kingdom. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to give, I'm going to give Pastor Dean's all. Uh, my book is already autographed for you and your family. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Amen. God did it. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Did you say you were 82? Yes. I'm 82. I can still dance. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Wow, 82 year old walking up this, these steps to come and preach the gospel, still firing for Jesus. Praise God. It's also a determination because that was 2012. That was the year I was supposed to go to Jamaica and couldn't go. And 14 on the team went without me, but all the plans were made. And I said, Lord, I mean, I can go this year, but next year I'm going. I went next year. I didn't care. I was in the wheelchair. I had what I need. I was here. So it's, it's also the, uh, back to the mind. As young as you feel. I've been married for 61 years. To God be the glory. Amen. For the great things he has done. Amen. Amen. No problem. 
Well, praise God. Say what God says. Amen. The word of God. So we agree with the word of God. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And uh, we have learned and believe to agree with God and disagree with everyone else. Every other system. And you know, sometimes we just have to do the examination in our lives because we agree with systems. Maybe because they are from the family line and uh, from culture or whatever. There are so many times we agree with things that when you really evaluate it, has no base, no foundation in the things of God. And so we have to choose to believe the report of the Lord. Amen? Amen. The report of the Lord stands above every other report. Isaiah says, whose report will you believe? We choose to believe the report of the Lord. So we thank you, Bob, for coming and sharing with us again today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for taking time out. And as I said, the preaching of the gospel must, be, must take place. And it's not only any one set of people. Maybe we carry it in different ways. But we can't get comfortable that um, the Lord said this about the nation and we don't have to be intense about it. The preaching of the gospel must take place. I shared with you earlier how oh, Turkey was the, the foundation of the preaching of the gospel as far as earth is concerned. One of the places. Now they are over 99% Muslims. And um, the, the folks there were sharing that many times they rent a space to have a meeting, a conference uh, for the kingdom of God. And when the folks realize what they're going to do, they turn off the power on them and all that kind of stuff and interrupt the conference. So now they were raising funds to get their own place so that they could uh, make sure they could uh, preach the gospel and uh, have it uninterrupted and all that kind of stuff. So again, the preaching of the gospel must take place. So we thank our, our friends from Minnesota, Minnesota, our friends from Baltimore. Thank you for coming and investing and sharing in Jamaica and in this local congregation. Again, thanks for coming. Give them a big hand, please, everybody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We give thanks to God. At this time, we're going to worship the Lord with our giving. We believe in giving as a part of uh, the kingdom. One of the kingdom principle is sowing and reaping and it is important to sow seeds into the kingdom in fact it is unreasonable to expect harvest when you don't sow seeds you know it, it don't work like that so if you are excited about harvest then you should be excited about sowing seeds also and so as, as uh, our sister said, she never wrote the book for money. She wrote it on the obedience of the Lord. And we don't receive offering and, and tithe to pay salaries or whatever. And other. Of course it goes towards offsetting uh, some of the responsibilities that we have. But the cause is bigger. It's about kingdom principles. It's about setting you up for harvest big harvest in your life because you are the biggest beneficiary of your giving. I love what Mike Murdoch says. He said, whatever leave your hand when you sow into the kingdom, don't leave your life. God is working. So I want you to get your seeds out and let us uh, get ready to sow into the kingdom today. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And receive. Father, we thank you for the seeds that are about to be sown in the kingdom. You're the one that is watching over seed time and harvest. And so, Father, I thank you as the Lord of the harvest that our trust and faith is in you. We thank you today that as we sow into the kingdom, lack and poverty are far from us and does not come nigh us. We thank you, God, for your intervention in our circumstances, in the cause of what we do. 
thank you for working in our situation. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship team. serve a faithful God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or ever imagine hallelujah God is able to do just what he said he would do he's God of Faithful. 